Hello everyone and welcome back to the Hammered Corner. In today's video, I visited the remains of the Bristol Mint, situated within the ruins of Bristol Castle. I will be giving you lots of information about the Mint, and some of the coins that were produced there courtesy of a fellow collector. I have used the Bristol Mint book you can see on screen, that gives a great insight into the Mints, the maps of where they were located, and how you can learn all about the Moneers from different reigns, and when the Mint was in operation. The book is extremely cheap, and I think it only cost me £5, so it's a must-have for those Bristol Mint collectors. So unlike the Tower Mint, the Bristol Mint had many different settlements that were used over a 700 year period, and before the recoinage of Edward I, there was no evidence as to where the coins were struck in Bristol. It was only until documentation placed it to be within the castle walls, but we will get into that shortly. So after the success of the video I posted on the history of the Tower Mint that I posted last year, I thought I would cover the mint closest to my home. For those who don't know, I am from a small town on the outskirts of Bristol, and I took some time to visit the remains of the castle situated in what is now called Castle Park. The castle would have been situated within the walls of the city, and was positioned next to the river. First we have the skeleton of St Peter's Church, located no more than 50 yards away from the castle remains. Excavations in the 1970s found that this is thought to be Bristol's first church, with the foundations dating back to 1106, with much of the church being built upon and complete sometime in the 15th century. It is still around for you to walk through, although due to the World War II bombings in 1945, it is but a ruin of a once popular place of worship. So the Bristol Castle was thought to have been erected on the command of William the Conqueror, with records mentioning the castle being governed to fight off William II. But this castle was made out of wood and stone, and throughout its life, it was an important stronghold for the civil wars that took place, imprisonment of high officials, and even established a mint within the walls when required. And that is exactly what we will get into now. So the castle was demolished in 1656 under orders of Oliver Cromwell, apart from one octagonal tower that was taken down in 1927. And here on the screen you can see the very remains of what used to be the housing of the mint, which was the birthing place of this Edward I coin you can see on screen now. Bristol began life as a village called Brigstow, and by the 11th century it had grown into a fortified settlement. Trade increased and a mint was established to help the coining of Danegeld in the reign of Aethelred II, probably around 1010 AD. At least half of the surviving Bristol coins were found in Scandinavia, and when Canute took the throne in 1016, coins were struck again in Bristol. The site of Bristol was on elevated ground seven miles up the Bristol Avon, and by its confluence with the river form, combined safe anchorage with access to the Severn Estuary and the Irish Sea, facilitating trade with South Wales and the South West England. Nothing is known about the location of the Bristol Mint before 1158, and the castle was estimated to have been built between 1070 and 1086. And the first firm bit of evidence of the Bristol Mint being within the castle walls comes within the first two years of Edward I's recoinage between 1279 and 1281. On the 8th of December 1279, an indenture was issued establishing a mint within the castle walls. The constable of which Peter de la Mer was appointed mint keeper. It was open when the king needed provincial mints to help coin as many of the new issues as possible, and once the desired amount was struck, the mint was closed in 1281 and didn't reopen until 1300, when houses were ordered to be repaired in the castle for the mint workmen, and was later closed in 1302. The Bristol Mint was used to help the production and was never a mint used for everyday work. It was closed for 163 years before being reopened in the castle in 1465, and stayed in operation during the coinages of Edward IV, Henry VI, and when Edward IV was restored. And during this time, Edward IV started to repair the castle, upgrading its security and defences to protect the mint as the mint was not only responsible for striking silver, but now gold coins too. The mint was then closed from 1472 and wasn't to be reopened until the reign of Henry VIII, where he issued gold and silver coins to be minted within the castle. As I mentioned previously, the castle played a big part in the civil war between Charles I and Parliament, and after the fall of Bristol to the Royalists on the 27th of July 1643, Thomas Bouchel established the mint once more. And Thomas Bouchel later claimed £1,020 for repairs to the castle to establish the mint, and in 1645, Bristol fell to Parliament, and soon after its capture, the mint closed and the castle was later demolished in 1656 by Oliver Cromwell. So were they the last coins to be struck in Bristol? No, they weren't. As William III established a small mint in 1696 when the recoinage required minting power from small provincial mints, and was established in the Tudor mansion of Nordens, which, after being used as the mint, became St Peter's Hospital, 
that was destroyed in 1940 during the war. These coins are denoted by the B under the King's portrait for Bristol, as you can see on screen now. Now the Bristol Mint Book is a fantastic little reference guide to help you understand what coins were minted there, why the coinages change frequently, and is a great starting book to stick your teeth into. If you'd like to pick one up or learn more about the Bristol Mint and their coins, I'll leave links to all the research material below, and links to this book too if I can find some. And be sure to let me know what mints you'd like me to cover next. I hope you've enjoyed seeing the ruins of the castle, some history of the mints, and more importantly, the coins of which were minted there. Thank you to the Bristol Mint Collector who let me use his coins, and thank you all for watching, and as always, keep collecting!